Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit 2017, the second year of this event in downtown San Francisco, actually not downtown, Pier 27 out on the water. Beautiful day outside and we're really excited to have the CFO of this fast growing company, he's Stephen Gaitoff, as I said, CFO of PagerDuty. Stephen, nice to see you. Right on, thanks, good to be here. Absolutely, so you've been with the company since January, so relatively new and yet yes. you've been here for a funding round, um, things are things are moving. We just had Jennifer on. She's yeah. just always full of energy. So right first on. off, welcome to Thank the you. company. And Thank you. What attracted you to PagerDuty? Um, a lot, uh, particularly the whole disruption, the whole notion of driving change, of uh, if not even defining a new industry. The the ability and in, in kind of from a financial standpoint, also of seeing a company and a product evolve from a, a very cool software tool to an operations platform, and and that is something that. Um, I was lucky enough to do at my last company at Rapid7 where it was a similar journey and, and value creation exercise of moving from tool to platform right. and, and disrupting an industry. And we, we did it there in the security space and cybersecurity and, and it, was a, it was a great run. And then I got lucky enough to get connected with Jennifer and the team here and realized that it was a similar journey, similar value prop, albeit in a much larger TAM across all of operations. Right. It's funny the the kind of the stepping function of you know is it a, is it a feature, uh, right. or or is it a tool, right? Or is it an application? And of course everybody wants to get to the platform play, right? But nobody's got a line item that they need to purchase a new platform uh, right. in Q4 2017. So you really need to have that kind of application focus to lay the groundwork for the platform play. But if you can make the transition. Obviously, a huge opportunity. Yeah, that's so, so. That's a great. We should have you engage with customers <laughs> because that is spot on, particularly here. And, and I think that's some of the excitement about the summit because it's really the first coming out, if you will, for us of digital operations management, where we have been so successful in the past at the tool level with a practitioner with helping make their lives better and all of that value creation around what they do, and then a little bit of the context. It's sometimes better to be a little lucky than smart with some some hard investment and, and input that we've done in the product that has evolved to the platform notion. But as, as you've heard and talked with people, um, it's starting to come to fruition, right? When the whole notion of decentralization of operations, of the whole disappearance of centralized command and control across the organization, it's, uh, it's kind of a modern day uh, digital ops analogy to software rules the world. It's really digital and cloud rules the world. Right. And so people need they need to do their job, and they need to focus on what creates value, whether it's marketing, or finance, or software development, and with all of the influx of tools that they use, whether it's applications or infrastructure, uh, we have this neat little niche where we're able to provide people the visibility and the knowledge to know what's going on and, and how things are working so that they can focus on what they do. Right. Uh, and that's pretty cool. So yeah. so everybody's a software company now, right? Everybody's right. living in software wrapped in wrapped in some type of product or service. So we hear that all the time. But I'm just curious to get your perspective from a CFO. You know, obviously public company CFOs have very specific tasks that they are that they are given right. based on regulations, government stuff. But you're kind of, you know, you're not there yet. Um, in terms of a company. So what are some of the things that a CFO does kind of in this stage of a company where you can really impact sure. the growth? And sure. you know, kind of what are you doing day to day besides just you know, these filing quarterlies and, and these types of activities? Yeah, that's, that hopefully someone, someone else is going to be focused on that. The, the most fun about the role and the real value add is uh, really providing um, support and insight and visibility to the rest of the company. So uh, kind of an Uber, uh, um, service provider to our stakeholders, to our exec team, to our employees, to our board and investors. And what we're really trying to do is provide a CFO, provide visibility, right? Visibility to what happened, how have we done, what has the performance been, what did we think it was going to be, and why did that happen? And then visibility going forward. What does the road ahead look like financially? Where are we growing? How are we growing? How are we investing our funds? And what kind of returns are we getting from a profile of investment of cost versus what it generates uh, in revenue and yield. Right. Uh, and that's the fun part about bringing people along on that journey, whether they're in finance or marketing, that people understand what we're investing in, what they're investing in, what their returns are from that, uh, and how we grow, how right. we grow and scale. Right, and growing and scaling is really interesting, right? Because growing and scaling is a good thing, right. but there's also there's also some bad parts of, of growing and scaling. It's a are. joke like a you know, B2C guy, guess what, you just got to order from Walmart, good news. Bad news, right. you just got to order right. from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> you better start exactly. building stuff. Exactly, so, um, be, be careful what you so ask So ma yeah, managing growth is an, is an interesting um, 
kind of dynamic because you right. don't want to get too far over your skis, and yet, especially here in Silicon Valley, right, it's all about growth. This is you're not a big, you know, thrown off dividends right. cash company, right. AT and T back in the day. So when you look at some of the the factors, what are some of the things to think about that maybe people don't really think about when you're trying to map out your growth, you guys are going sure. international, just put a few yeah. extra bucks in the bank. I'll I'm, tell you, one of the most significant things that is very difficult, very easy and obvious to say and talk about is the whole dynamic of introducing the ability for a company to scale and do things well in large format at low cost, low friction, and not become a bureaucracy. So not to introduce too much process, <laughs> right? Too much um, control, too much front end prevention, uh, while at the same time making sure people are doing smart things, that you're doing smart business, that people aren't getting too far out over their skis on committing capital or committing the company to do something. So you want to support people by putting in the, the big three, people, process, and technology, in a way that the company can grow without hindering growth. Right. Uh, and you see that in so many different areas as you grow and you start building up your finance functions and you put in ERP systems, so you don't want it to be too cumbersome. Similarly, you bring functions like legal in-house, and so uh, in some companies I've been at, uh, folks get really nervous. Like, oh no, now we're going to have a, a no person uh, killing deals. And, and the nice thing that I've experienced here at PagerDuty is that the sales folks have really yearned and craved that input and leadership, saying like, hey, when are we getting a, a new head of legal? When are we getting that team to come help us craft deals and drive things forward? And so it's a little bit of, a, a little bit of an art, less a science, insofar as bringing in resources, putting in processes, putting in systems to help marketing, sales, engineering, really those three do their craft and do it well with less friction and without more uh, bureaucracy and too much oversight. Right, right. So I'll give one more question, sure. uh, could you put it around? As you've seen kind of the growth of open source and kind of API economy mm -hmm. and you know, a platform versus an application where you, know, you get much more value by kind of opening up the APIs to a broader community. Right. And yet at the same time, you know, maybe you're not protecting quite the same level of IP protection, which before, you know, everything was kept in-house. Right. We had no open source projects and, and it was all of our IP. But really the, the former is proving to be a much more valuable for sure uh, way to go to market. As you've seen that kind of evolved, you know, kind of what's your, your take on it? Obviously you got a good ecosystem that they're developing sure. here, there's a big expo hall upstairs. It's a very different way to right. build value. Um, it is, and, and in my humble opinion, it's really based on the user, right? And for, for, for me, that's the most significant metric of value creation. Say, okay, at the end of the day, how many users do you have on your platform? And if you look at it from that perspective, the driver to getting users to come into the platform is an open, high integration, uh, user-based uh, focus on what they can use, not a walled garden approach. And so the value comes in what you're able to do, not the propriety of your code. And in, in that regard, having a high integration, right? The whole PagerDuty tech stack is about integrating with 200 plus different applications and pieces of infrastructure so that users can therefore get the greatest value from everything else that they're investing in and spending on. And so you've created a, a valuable company uh, like Red Hat and other folks have based on the ultimate of, of open source, right. uh, where you provide a valuable service that is not necessarily the um, propriety of your code, to your point, intellectual property, albeit there's a pretty decent amount there, it's really the competitive advantage, the time to market, the heavy lifting and steep curve on being able to integrate everything that's out there, um, correlate what's out there too, which is, a, which is a difficult task and takes a lot of time and money to learn and get good at, and that in and of itself is a tremendous amount of value to users. All right, well Stephen, great insight Brian, thank and you. Uh, enjoy your journey. I'm sure Jennifer will keep you moving and hustling <laughs> down the road. Exactly. Thanks for taking Excellent. a few minutes out of your day. Thank you. All right, he's Stephen, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit 2017 in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.